It's Miles. It's Treble. It's the Make It Make Sense podcast. Yeah, Treble, yeah. how you doing, my friend? I'm all right, man. I'm hanging in there. Nature. Nature is going to take its natural course regardless. Mm -hmm. So when you upset the natural course of nature, regardless of how long you try to offset it, it's going to reset itself. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening right now. It's a great reset. You take all of the energy of the people and the things that's happening in the planet. The mm -hmm. planet is upset. The planet lives and breathes all of these energies on a daily basis as well. Mm -hmm. So the planet is upset. So you're definitely seeing um, effect of that, but you're also seeing effect of uh, weather control too. But so, what did we actually do to fuck things up? What we did is we allowed the wrong people in charge. Mm -hmm. And with power hungry things, you set things in motion that you shouldn't mm -hmm. such as the nuclear explosion literally that happened in japan right 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 just absolutely uncalled for mm -hmm. it is one of the most egregious things ever done in world history probably the most egregious thing i don't care what nobody say the atomic bomb you're talking about yeah that i mean here, you, yeah. literally people's shadows they say it was their shadows that was frozen into the wall, but that's not what it is. People just evaporated into the wall. Right. So and you got to walk for years and years and years through this rubble looking at your grandmama and your great grandmama body being seared into this wall if you survive. You think that's what got the aliens' attention? Because that's a theory that's been uh, tossed around quite a bit is that once that happened, all of a sudden these sightings from all across the world started happening and that maybe we just make we, we drew a little bit of attention by snapping a new uh, uh, atom in half to a degree yes this is also a fact it's called operation high jump okay. this is the year 41 six years before 47 which is roswell and i forget exactly what year the atomic bomb was dropped was that 42 45 45 was the atomic bomb yes perfect hiroshima okay. yeah mm -hmm. so 41 Hitler is at his peak. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is worried that he's about to try a full-scale invasion over here. They got to get over there first, get him out of there. Mm -hmm. Hitler decides, I got other things to do. I ain't worried about y'all. I'm going to Antarctica. American government like, Antarctica? What the hell is Hitler going to Antarctica for? We're in the middle of war. Mm -hmm. They also discovered this is some what hypothetical but i got some proof there was rumors that they found a lot of what looked like extraterrestrial craft planes without wings because the germans okay. had extreme extreme knowledge of this kind of stuff they had something at the time called the nazi bell which mm -hmm. was called the die glock these 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 flightless things are separate than the die glock the die glock was a legitimate time jumping machine they they didn't master it mm -hmm. so people could jump and come back and they would be like melted on the inside of it sometimes or they'll come back and be totally fine but they'll be shell-shocked by what they just witnessed this conspiracy says hitler had a secret anti-gravity ufo in the Side, u.s though, anytime it. they use the word conspiracy is true the word conspiracy theory is literally a psychological term created by a psychologist in the government to deflect people from the truth it's literally in writing so they have stuff like this at this time and the american government is like yo what the hell we got to catch up so they go over to antarctica they send this guy admiral bird he was the highest ranking air force official at the time and he went with a huge naval fleet these thirty thousand soldiers get to uh antarctica and now mind you admiral bird is keeping a note on this the whole time they're taking massive naval ships they don't know what they're about to encounter they don't know if it's about to be an all-out war when they get there or what so they they kind of camp out a little further away from where they think the main location is from where hitler is mm -hmm. they go over to this area to take a small crew of like experienced fighters admiral bird and i think maybe eight or nine of them all together that got in their airplanes and they took their flight mm -hmm. to this area to go like take a look around and see what they saw. Mm -hmm. When they get there, he in his right hand says that they seen, and this is where the, you heard of the group, we all heard of the group, the Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. This is where the term the Foo Fighters came from. He seen what he called silver discs that could fly at the speed of light. They can cover, they can go from pole to pole on the earth in a matter of seconds. They had a capability of maneuvering that was not seen in the human world. Mm -hmm. This is his words. Mm -hmm. This is the same guy is where they get the story journey to the center of the earth. And I'll get to that mm. in a second. He's like, what the actual f is this? 
And they said the thing starts shooting energy orbs at him. And he that's the only way he could describe it because he's never seen anything like this. So he's freaking out because he's like, I've never seen or heard of anything like this. Mm -hmm. This thing is way faster than anything we can do. Anywhere we turn or look, it's in front of us. But it has it's not killing us. It's almost like it just wants us to turn away. He basically, at the end of the day, ended up being like, I think he said it was like, don't quote me on the numbers, but it was like seven of them that they seen that came out to basically keep them away mm -hmm. from going to this area. So he goes back to their little hideout. They don't even follow them. So he finds that very like, hell is going on out here we come out here to find hitler and we see this mm -hmm. what is this mm -hmm. they are so go by they go out take another trip when they take their other trip this time they get to a certain level they see these uh spherical discs again and they're like this ain't good we need to be ready to engage i think he only flew with like three other people this time a much smaller crew they're ready for war this time and he said they tried to shoot them and stuff the first time and they couldn't they couldn't land anything on them they were too fast they could dodge bullets in midair he's like what is this they go back around these things come out they basically are showing them look if we want to destroy you we can but we don't so admiral burr is like yo just calm down like take your weapons down like let's just see what happens for a second at the end of the day there's nothing we can do if they want to kill us anyway but they're not why so he says that they get to a certain part around the back of this massive mountain and then they all fly closer and it's like another six or seven of these spherical discs and they kind of surround their plane mm -hmm. and they start flying under them above them and behind them and stuff like that but mm -hmm. again they're not attacking he said they get to a certain point he looks down and he sees grass so he's like he's rubbing his eyes like he can't this has to be fake these machines have to be distorted in his mind or something there's no way I'm looking at grass in Antarctica. He says, and as he looks, there's a big animal walking across the grass. And he's like, no, this animal was a woolly mammoth. And he documented it as such. It's a woolly mammoth, no question about it. This animal is supposed to be extinct. Why is it in Antarctica? And why is there grass in Antarctica? So then he says they get to a certain point, the ships basically take control of their airplanes and then fly them down to this grassy plain and they land. He says they then get out and they're greeted by what looks like humans, but there's slight differences they can tell they're not humans. It's just too much. He can't even think straight. He's like, what the actual fuck is going on? Person says, Admiral Byrd, we're happy to see you. We need to talk to you. We need your help. Like, we'll explain everything in a second. You need to meet the king. He's like, mm -hmm. okay, cut the jokes. What's going on here? But they're like, no, this is serious. You're not here by accident. He goes in to this cave and he describes it as the wildest experience ever. And it, he had to write this because the fate of the world depended on it. They go down this long corridor, they get to an elevator. He says they go down, 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 down into the earth. He said when they get there, it's a really weird smell down there. Everything was like crystal. It was a crystal city. Buildings, he said, and there were so many lights and colors that it was impossible for him to put in words the level of beauty he was seeing. And a person comes back and they're like, I'm a bird, we know it's all a lot, but we need you to come with us. The king needs to speak to you. And he's like, I'm not going anywhere else until you tell me what's going on. He's the person like, I don't know. All I know is I'm doing my job and I got to take you to the king. I don't know why they want to talk to a human either. He's like, okay, you don't even acknowledge as a human. What are you? We'll explain it all when you get up here. He gets to this massive palace. And he talks to this person who is the king. This king is like, you guys are working on some stuff that's about to actually affect the whole landscape of everything. And we know it. So he doesn't okay. specify us in the time of bomb, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. But he says, you guys are doing stuff and you're working on stuff that'll affect the entire course of the planet. The planet is alive and you mm -hmm. cannot do what you're planning to do on this planet. And you... Being the high ranking official you are and your government are one of the only people that can say this and they might listen. He says, so why don't you just tell them? He says, yeah. we've tried. We went on diplomatic approaches multiple times. The government blew them off. And then they made an alliance, he says, with the other side because they didn't want to agree with the laws of nature. You have the U.S. government and other governments all involved in the middle, the human then you have beings that are saying, we'll give you technology, we'll give you things that you need to know to help your people sustain it, as long as you agree to these laws of nature. And these are things we won't allow. So he's like, I still don't get why you chose me. Basically, we knew you were coming out here anyways, mm -hmm. and you don't really have a choice. You can tell them or not. Mm -hmm. But if you tell them and they listen, you'll save a lot of people. If you tell them and they don't listen, well, at least you try and we'll respect that. And he was like, I don't know if that's enough of a winning situation for me to risk my 
position in my life if I go say something like this to the government. He goes, look, if the government goes forward what they're doing, there will come a time in the future after that, which seems like a long future for y'all, but it's not a very long future for us. And if they do what they're planning on doing, it'll affect us in a way that war will have to start. Humans won't live if the size that they need to help them decide not to. Mm-hmm. So they have a choice. And he's like, really? Like, why me? Like, I, mm-hmm. and that's what he said. It's not about just you. It's not like you're this special super person. He then goes back and apparently tells the government everything that just happened. And they said, ha, okay, noted. Atomic bomb happens all of these years later. So, and then the super, like you say, activity comes up.